Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. So, the moment we've all been waiting for finally has arrived. Sonny, well, Carly and Jason find out that Sonny is alive. I mean, they were practically about to, well, you, you know what they're about to do. And Sonny walks in the room, Carly passes out, now she wakes up. They pretty much kind of fill in Sonny on the stuff that's been going on, you know. Her joining the mob, their reason for getting married. <sighs> Problem with that is that they're leaving a lot of stuff out. They're leaving a lot of stuff out. And I have a feeling like after today... They're just going to continue to lie to this man's face. I mean, we talked yesterday about the, about the level of disrespect that Jason and Carly have shown. I mean, hell, even if Sonny didn't come back home, you know, the fact that they're about to sit there and do that in his house, in his room... In his bed? I, I, I can't. But, you know, the fact that you're just going to sit there and continue to lie to this man until somebody slips up or somebody winds up being honest. Which I have a feeling that somebody's going to wind up slipping up. Because I have a feeling that Jason's going to sit there and tell him. Carly's going to sit there and say no. And we're going to probably go through this for another three months. Hopefully not that long, but... So finally, Anna catches up to Peter. And Peter tries to make a move. Anna shoots him in the shoulder. <laughs> it's so funny because, you know, after he got shot in the shoulder, he was like, You really shot me! Really? Bro? She's holding the gun right to you. What did you think she was going to do? I mean, she literally said, If you move, I'm going to shoot you. You really shot... Alright, bro. Anyway, he gets shot in the shoulder. Valentine comes in there. And while they're both distracted, Peter makes a jump. Like, he jumps, um... I don't know, into a river. So... You know, and it wasn't the thing that most likely the fall killed him, but we both know. If this man survived <laughs> being thrown down the steps, locked in the freezer, and walking out looking fresh to death, I'm pretty sure that fall is going to do nothing to him. But, um, I don't know, that's good because I like Peter. And, um, you know, he always, he always... Managed to find a way to make things very interesting. Now with that being said, at some point in time. Liz and um, Finn, you know, find out that Peter's still alive. Now at first they're both kind of freaking out, you know, like, you know, Liz's like, oh, I wonder what happened. And, you know, we, we didn't really sit there and check and yada, yada, yada. And now he's out on the loose and stuff like that. And it's like. They talk about it for like a good few, a good few amount of minutes, and I think I, I think after a while, Liz's like, "All right, let's let's not talk about that. Let's talk about like uh, uh, camping and stuff like that." I'm like, "Are you serious? You should be sitting there trying to strategize what you're gonna do, not talking about your romance that probably I don't know, fifty percent of the people actually won and the other fifty percent don't." Um, but it's the fact that they just like, all right, well, let's let's talk about something else. No, let's not. <laughs> Liz, Finn, you are screwed. You know what? I sit there saying that they're screwed, but I remember when they thought they had Peter's body, and you know the the freezer or whatever, and they're out there sitting there watching Violet play softball. They're out there sitting there celebrating Chase return from the hospital. So. Yeah, um, that's, that's pretty much where their priorities are. 
Now, before Peter did fall, he did make it clear, like, yo, listen, you take me, like, you take me into custody. I'm making sure that thing goes down for, you know, what he did to me. And it did also ask about, um, you know, Drew's abduction. And at first, he gave that response like he genuinely didn't know anything about it. But of course, he sat there and tried to play it to his advantage by being like, oh, uh, if, you make it, if you make it work my wild, I may sit there and tell him. I'm like, nah, bro, you already, you already, you know what I'm saying? Like, your first response already told us everything that we need to know. So, whatever sort of leverage you think you had, well... Yeah, your, your first response just kind of killed it. Now, Michael and Willow... I know a lot of people feel like they're very boring. They don't really do much. And I'm not going to lie, this episode didn't really, like, sway that opinion too much. I'm going to be honest, I was completely bored to tears. I mean, they didn't really sit there and do too much of anything except for talk about the future. Or, you know, Michael seemed like he wants to get married and... Well, it seems like they're fine where they are, and so they just kind of don't really do too much of anything except for dance and smile and look at each other. You know, at one point where Maxie got back to the corner mains, Brooklyn was like, you know, with Peter being out on the loose and everything like that, I think you should stay here. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Did you just did you just sit there and say that you think that Maxie should be here? You know she's been nearly blowing up this plan since it started. And you think it's a good idea to keep her here. I mean a lie that Maxie told was already a stretch. Oh, Peter may sit there and come out the Valentine's door to sit there and get back at him. Really? Really? Because I'm pretty sure it was a couple of people that was just like, that doesn't seem like it makes any sense. But okay, sure, whatever. Um, I'm not going to lie. I thought that Brooklyn was going to sit there and tell Chase the truth about the whole Bailey thing and, uh, you know, ELQ and, you know, all that stuff. I thought she was going to really sit there and tell him the truth. And you find in the next scene, she's asking him for help for a puzzle. And I'm like... Okay. All right. Fine. We're just gonna we're just gonna stress this out too. All right. Fine. This is this is what we do now. Okay. All right. I, I get that. I felt like the whole puzzle thing, at least for me, <laughs> was kind of like a middle finger, and we're just like, nope. We're not gonna sit there and tell you it. Uh, we're not gonna sit there and go into that. We're just gonna we're just gonna just stretch it out even longer. Fine. It was nice to see Scott, but I'm not gonna lie. He didn't really do too much of anything. Um, I mean, all he did was go to Brits so that way they can both feel, like, not, like, alone, I guess, but, like, kind of worry together. That's how he sat there and put it. But I'm just like, was there really a reason why you need to be in this episode? And, of course, Brit figured out, you know, um, that Liz made up the whole thing about, well, you know, the notes and stuff like that just to make her feel better. So... They had somewhat of a nice moment. Um, but I'm not gonna lie. The fact that it, here's the thing, they had a nice, they had a nice, good moment. The fact that Liz had to practically be coaxed by Maxie just to sit there and do something nice for Britt, it was like, what did Britt actually do to Liz to make her feel like that? You know, like to make her feel like, oh, okay, fine. We'll sit there and, you know, we'll help her out, you know, we'll do something nice for her. And it's like, really? I feel, you know, my problem is I feel like if the, if, the search, if the situation was a little bit like that with Cameron and Cameron didn't do the, like, the right thing as far as, like, helping out somebody or whatever, she would have been all over his ass and if they're saying, well, you should have sat there and really did something for this person, but yet, it, I don't know. I, I feel like it was unnecessary that they, you know, that Maxie had to practically, like, goat Liz and Terry to do something nice for Brett. But, whatever. I, I guess, you know what? F it. We got to this point, so, okay. Sure. It 
It's weird because I feel like I'm done, but yet I feel like I'm missing so much. The problem with the stuff that I'm missing is that it didn't really seem like it was that important. I mean, Austin just pretty much played messenger and taxi, you know, taxi driver to Maxi, and Scott was there because I guess it was in his contract. Because to be honest, he didn't really do too much of anything else. Yeah. Besides the Sunny, Jason, and Carly stuff, and then the Peter, Anna, and um, Valentine stuff, everything else is just like. Eh. I personally cannot wait until Sonny tells Carly and Jason and some other people, whatever, about Nina's involvement. Because when Nina gets back to Port Charles, uh, first of all, that cake's going to be so great. And second of all, it's just going to be really great. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. I think that's pretty much about it. If I miss anything, please write down in the comment section below. Like I said, um, those two are the highlights of the story. Michael and Willow were just like there to be there. Um, I mean, Maxie and Maxie and Brooklyn had some good scenes, you know. Um, I don't know. I felt like every time that like you know people picked up the baby or they moved her away, it's like Maxie want to say something or like she kept just like looking with like I don't know um you know when this whole thing comes out and Valentine realizes that that's not his daughter and Brooklyn has to sit there and give up that child it's going to be a giant mess um I mean Max will have back her baby but it's like everyone else is going to have to sit there and deal with the fallout I'm not gonna lie, I can't really think of anything else to sit there and say about this episode because, well, again, besides the two highlights of the show, everything else is just like, eh. If I missed anything, please write it down in the comment section below. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe. See you in the next video.